with that one, the one you got in your hand, you get like. Alright. Alright. Don't don't snore too loud. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you ready? I'm ready. Alright man, what's going on? What's going on, dude? How you been? Fucking here, bro. Hell yeah. Pop tracks, love songs. Pop tracks and love songs. We're like what, a, a week away? A week right? away? Yeah. A week away. How you how you feeling? I'm feeling excited. I just want to get it out there. It's been done for a while. So. Is it worth like the headaches, the uh, the delayed flights, sleeping in the airport? Yeah, and... <laughs> that was rock like that. Why not make it? You know. So let's get into it a little bit, man. Um, the cover. What's yeah. going on with the cover? So the cover art. Um, so the whole album, really, the concept of it, right, is me kind of wrestling with the fact that for a long time I've been making really pop sounding not really super personal not super um you know introspective music like some of my friends that i work with some whatever and i was kind of you know debating that and it really started with the lyric on the song on time where i said last year's a rough patch of dumb wrongs and all i did was make pop tracks and love songs because mm -hmm. it's like you know you go through so much you experience so much in life and then you make like options mm -hmm. and it's just like is that a real representation of who I am? You know, right. so this whole album is kind of like really just exploring that concept of like, what is it that I want to give the world? Like, what is, who am I? And like, what do I want to give the world? And so, but I wanted to keep it really pop sounding and right. really, you know, to keep the melodic and have it kind of be like a parody of itself. Mm -hmm. So the cover art um, has like two layers, right? So like one of them, there's nothing more basic in the world than a baby picture on the cover. Right. Art. That's like such a classic trope in like rap music. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, like, that's the pop tracks in Love Song side. You know what I mean? Super basic, everyone does it, everyone whatever. But at the same time, what I'm really trying to come to terms with on this album is, like, the purity. You know what I mean? And who I really am. And so, what's more pure and innocent than me as a six-month-old baby in front of a piano? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, so it kind of has that dual layer of, like, it's, it's at the same time basic mm -hmm. and like super pure and innocent which is what I was trying to go for with the, the project yeah a lot of the songs on there from you know because I've, I've listened to it a lot of times actually and a lot of songs what I've noticed is there's two sides to it right yeah. like um, well, well all of them actually but you know while we're talking about that let's let's get into let's get into the first record first record is uh can't make you happy yeah I can make you happy so <laughs> first time I heard that record bro I was like it's a few lines that caught my attention and uh, it kind of made me it made me a little bit more curious as to who Brendan Bennett was because I feel like yeah. I feel like people know you they're familiar with the face they heard the name they know the music but they don't really know you know you right yeah. so one of the lines on there you talk about you mentioned Zans and you mentioned like a, some type of form of addiction, right? Is that like something that you've gone through before? And yeah, it's something I'm going through right now. I, I, you know, um, I kind of just like started dealing with it. Mm -hmm. I just started getting help for it and, and, you know, talking to my family about it, talking to my, you know, cause it's, it's, it's a difficult path cause it's so easy to just, for me at least, it yeah. was so easy to kind of get away with it and just yeah, do whatever yeah. you need to do to survive and, and you know keep the facade going keep the personality keep the momentum of like who you are going but like has that, that shit will fuck you has, up has, has making music and talking about that any music helped you deal with it in real life yeah way? cause I mean that's that's there's a couple you know and I will get into like some more mm -hmm. checks but I say some shit on this album that like I don't say to people in like real life yeah so yeah, it's like yeah. so it's like I kind of force myself to like confront it mm -hmm. by putting it out to the public and so by like talking about it and like not being afraid to talk about it on record mm -hmm. makes people be like yo are you good like, yeah, well, you yeah. Know, what's, what's going on you yeah know I mean? that's you... that's exactly how I felt like a few times I wanted to text you like hey man like, yeah like, are you okay? like yeah, yeah and that's and that, that was kind of the point like psyching myself into doing that uh -huh. was like again the honesty of it and then the you know the realness of confronting those things and like being honest about those things was like the purity part of it and like the honesty part of it right. of the project um, so uh, so with that line right there's also another part of that line where you say uh, I still pray hard right yeah. so again the duality right right then and there in that line is like a perfect example like you have this 
this demon, so to speak, right? That you're that you're confronting and that you're dealing with, but then you also have like this light also, right? Exactly. So does that also play a part into you know, like with you? I mean, I don't know what your religion is, but faith just yeah. I don't, I'm not really. I don't have a religion. Mm-hmm. Never, I don't go to you know any like services or anything like that. But I definitely believe in like a, a higher purpose and a higher power. And I just know through my life, like the c- crazy coincidences and, and random events that have led me to like to be who I am and to meet certain people in my life. Like I know there's a, a greater scheme behind this all. Mm-hmm. And so that line is kind of super important because I start in the first verse, I say, used to pray hard, used to pop Xanax. Right, right, right. Now it's fuck that, it's in our hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like kind of like this fake triumph, uh-huh. right? And then the second verse, I start to get a little bit more real. Yeah. And it's like, and it, and it comes back and it's like, I still pray hard. I still pop in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I lost my mind. It's in God's hands. Yeah. And so it's like, it, it you know, it was kind of an interesting, uh, that duality is really interesting. And that was like, to start it off, mm-hmm. I feel like that song was really, there's a lot of dualities. Yes, yeah, that's that another thing I want to ask you is why why that song as the first song? Like, what, what about that song made you want to put it as the first representation of you? I mean, the beat, first of all, like when it first starts, mm-hmm. it just, I feel like it sets a tone. Wonder snap on that sample Mm -hmm. um, and Cappy snapped on the drop and and we worked on that and I feel like the production just felt very intro-y and my lyrics felt very you know introducing the whole idea of the project because it it is like the first introduction to that duality where it's like it's a very poppy song Mm -hmm. you know the, the, the drop is really catchy the production that Wonder did is amazing and super fun you know what I mean in, in one sense but like there's this like darker side to it and so I feel like it just set the tone for the rest of the project and cause like really that idea the chorus is I can't make you happy but I can make you dance yeah that chorus I didn't catch that chorus until the fourth time I listened to that record like yeah. it finally hit me how you're in a way is you're telling whoever you're talking to that listen I can't I can't satisfy your soul but I can give you this as like exactly. a coping mechanism, and that and that was and that was the whole. That's what I felt like I was doing with my music. Right. You know what I mean? It's like because in real life, like especially you know, in the past couple of years, like there's been times where I've been like a terrible person to people, right, right, right. and like you know what I mean? I just I've I've kind of succumbed to like certain demons or certain things that that led me to make certain decisions that were like not who I was and not who I wanted to be. But at the same time. I was making people dance right. and like people were you know what I mean I was in college and everyone's like bumping the song and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm just like it, it just felt like I felt disconnected from it because it was like in real life do I have this effect on people right, right, right. in real life when I talk to you like do I make you feel that way or is it just the music Right. and that was kind of like that's why I chose that as the first song because that's the idea of the whole project is like who am I and like what do I have to contribute to the world is it just music and that leads us to the next record right because i feel like you having this introspective point of view on your music and on your life and on who you are as a person allows you to make records like skeleton right with with nate traveler who was another artist who's very introspective very introspective inspired a lot of yeah me taking this different approach so talk about you guys dynamic a little bit like what is it how does how does a musical relationship work between Nate Traveler and Brendan Bennett he's I mean he's just like my brother like you know what I mean it, it really it never feels like we're making music together it never mm. feels like anything that that record in fact I was it was supposed to be on his project mm. and we were I was here for the first session we made the song and we helped it I was kind of like executive producing it like I do with his records but it was like a minute 30 seconds we didn't really have a lot of structure to it it wasn't really like fully set he just we had it as it was and then like one day he called me and he's like I just feel like this should be your record oh. like I want you to put a verse on it and I was like it, it just made my whole cause that's kinda how me and Nate work like it's it's very symbiotic it's very like give and take and no real ego behind it it's, yeah. you know what I mean like I love making music with him it, it really like like I said it doesn't feel like work it really feels like you like, guys my brother. you guys uh, I feel like you you, fan, you ever used to watch Pokemon as a kid? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like Nate Traveler's like, you know, like Mew? <laughs> He's like this like little innocent, uh, this little innocent Pokemon who has the power to like destroy or Everybody save the world. Up, yeah. But he's just in his own <laughs> little bubble, just living life, right? So that's Nate Traveler, right? But then Brendan Bennett is like Mewtwo, right? He's like the same exact, same kind of the same exact thing, but Mewtwo kind of has more of a, 
he's more like he has more of a purpose in mind with the way he does things. As in Mew is just floating around and just living his life, and Mewtwo is like, no, this this is what. And, it and is. that's why I think we we take inspiration from each other in that mm-hmm. regard because he has that free flowing, pure energy that yeah. I I strive, I want to have. Everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like everyone looks up to Nate because yeah. he he's such a genuine human. He's so real. He's so free flowing and honest and whatever. And I have some of those traits, and people can right, kind right. of. Mis- I, I feel like can mistake me for being a free flowing person right. but at the end of the day I'm kind of I'm very calculated I'm very yeah, 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 you know yeah. I don't really share all, I, I kind of do things really strategically and so and like for him you know that's why it was really beneficial for him to you know working on a loan on Life Factory because I kind of helped him take that that free flowing yeah, form bring and, and bring it all together. Exactly. That's why. Because who, uh, yeah. who, uh, who came up with the hook? Was that a joint? That, no, that was Nate. All Nate. That was Nate. Yeah. Man, the the was... still blue part. Yeah. Was kind of my idea. He doesn't really like it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I, I feel like that. I, I'm not mad at that part though. Like it, no. It kinda... To me, the reason I did that right is because the hook and the verses are really intense mm-hmm. lyrically and and content wise, mm-hmm. and so that part is supposed to distract you. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the beat switches. Mm-hmm. There's this new pattern and in, in the flow of it, and it's just like, and Nate's vocals are so pretty yeah, and yeah, so yeah. big, and you're just like, all of a sudden, you forget that what you just heard, like what everything you just heard. Mm-hmm. You're just like, still, you know, what I mean, you're just kind of like jamming out to it, and then all of a sudden, it comes back in, and it's like that was the part of it that was like the pop track, like trying to give it a little more right um, surface feel to it, you know. You have a few lines on it that caught my attention. Uh, yeah, yeah. The first one was uh, maybe I'm misquoting it, but you said uh, it's kind of a, it's it's a play it's it's a whole line, but it's yeah. a bit of a line where you say something going like a breaking due to art. Yeah, I, I start I start my verse off and say um, uh, all this pain I kept from my art, mm-hmm. I can't even write anymore. Right, I won't break through. And what, like, what did you mean by that line? Because so that was like from the place of like really really like that track is probably the most uh, emotionally like honest painful track on the project mm-hmm. right and so that was really coming from the place of like what led me to make pop tracks love songs in the first place was feeling like I have all this shit I've been going through I have all this like pain that I choose to hide from the world right. because I want to be Brendan Bennett but it starts to feel like. I can't I don't even know how to write so from myself like, like yeah, I don't even know yeah. how to like I don't even know how to express myself right, anymore right, right. because I'm so focused on you know how do I make this catchy how do I make this something that people want to listen to mm-hmm. and it's like I kept so much from my art mm-hmm. that like I don't even know how to be a real like artist anymore yeah, you know, yeah. that's kind of how it felt like that was the idea behind those lines so as opposed to instead of uh, kind of recording or saying what you want to say you're kind of in a way, following a formula that you know people got you, and I feel like artists go through that, right? Because you want you want to you want to essentially just put your soul and your heart into a song, of course. But you also have to find a way to make it digestible by the mass. Exactly. You can't just you know. Which so is I, the hard, and that's the hardest part about mm-hmm. making music. And and sometimes it feels like an ultimatum where you have to choose one or the other. Mm-hmm. This project, I tried not to do that. I tried to like make things that were true to me, but like also digestible Mm -hmm. but it's still I mean it's not as digestible as I think the year we got right or on time or like other tracks that I've made um so there is kind of this give and take of that and and it's it's hard as an artist to kind of balance those two and that's why again Alone by Nate making that album really inspired me a lot and changed my whole outlook on music Mm -hmm. because that project is so digestible but it's so real Mm -hmm. it's so painfully honest it's so genuine you know what I mean and so that kind of inspired me and made me realize like yo like you can make music that's from the heart and right. not have to sacrifice the the sonically pleasing aspect of it there's also another line on there that you touch on uh, you touch on I forgot exactly how the line went yeah but you touch on being you say you mentioned being bi on yeah. the line yeah yeah so when I heard when I heard that line like when I was breaking down the album, I'm like, man, like he went through addiction. He has this, he has that, and it's like a whole whirlwind of emotions and a whole whirlwind of things going on at the same time. And you really hear it, like 
the way like the way you belt out some of those notes yeah. it's like you, you I found new tones because yeah. I was because being part of like writing lyrics that were being honest to myself mm-hmm. kind of unlocked like a vocal part of me that I hadn't explored either mm-hmm. where like I was like putting real intonation into certain like lyrics and, and the melodies and harmonies and shit like that and that, that line is really important and it's so funny because it's one line yeah and it's never touched upon again yeah if kinda, you don't pay attention it, it's, it's quick it's, you can you can lose it yeah, yeah and that's that's again one of those things that's like like most of my really close friends know that uh-huh. about me but like the, the line itself is I say to be yourself and most family don't know him by. Right, right. And so it's like, I, like my immediate family knows. Yeah. There's family that's gonna watch this. They're gonna hear that for the first time, <laughs> and they're gonna be like, no, for real shit. And they're gonna be like, why the fuck didn't you tell me? But um, or they're gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, you know. But that's it's like again, it's like that's such a real part of me. Like, why am I hiding that? Like, what right, what do right. I have to gain from from hiding that from the world and right. like not being myself? And so, but it's but it's again, it's ironic because I put it in the phrase of like. I try to inspire people all the time to be themselves uh-huh. and I'm the biggest pep talker in the world like I love when people are in crisis they come to me and right. like I, I'm so good at, at helping people through their shit but it's like I'm not helping myself through my shit right, you know right, what I mean right. so like what kind of hypocrite is that you know what I mean like how do you how do you manage to be constantly talking about like be yourself right. follow your heart all this shit and then you don't tell most don't people about exactly. like your own like like love like you know what I mean like who uh-huh. you love who you choose to so it's just like that line is really important and was, again was it uh was it hard like putting that line in there or like you know with the, being being conscious that family members and and friends are gonna hear that and it was I kind of was just in a position like fuck it it mm-hmm. was the same thing with talking about my addiction it was the same thing those are things that I hadn't talked about with people but mm-hmm. I kind of forced myself to like dig deep and be like if people have questions if people yeah. hear that and they want to talk about it let's talk about it <laughs> you know what I mean like let's force myself to be honest right. with the world you know what I mean by again and it's kind of hiding behind the music which is again kind of part of the theme of the album it's, yeah, like, it's so kinda... easy to hide behind records and, and lyrics and then just big oh it's just lyrics just... well one thing I like about that and, and not just that just a lot of things that you touch on on this album, one thing that I really do enjoy is that you don't let that overshadow the music. It's like the music always comes first, and then everything else just falls in line. Right, and that's why I only really like wanted it. to touch on it for a line. Right, like give right, it, right. And give it that moment where, like, and, it, and especially, like, with the context of the beat and the context of the structure of the song, like, that line sticks, because then the beat drops out and it echoes, and it's just, like, you're kind of stuck with, like, oh. He just said that. Yeah. Oh, true. Like, <laughs> word. I didn't know that, but like, true. But then it keeps going. You know what I mean? And it's just like I, I try not to let the the themes overshadow the music because right, right. again, that's my idea of like keeping it digestible. Now, next record is insert love song. Yeah. Why? Why that name for for the? So record? it's it's funny because so I had the idea for Pop Jackson love songs mm-hmm. when I made on time. I didn't start recording or even writing the album until about June so there was like a three four month period where I just had the idea for an album but I was in school I wasn't really you know whatever um but while I was in school I was trying to I was trying to think of concepts for songs because I wanted to have that dual nature and kind of talk about real things but but have it but sell it at a surface level at the same time right have it something people want to bump and so I made a track list Mm -hmm. I made a fake track list of like songs I wanted to make I didn't have beats I didn't have lyrics I didn't have anything right and so I think like five out of the seven songs were inspired by that fake track list mm-hmm. and as I was making that track list I realized there was no love song mm-hmm. and so it was called Pop Tracks and Love Song so I was like I have to touch on the love song part of it or else that's kind of like a mute like title it right. really makes sense so I, I just put in the fake track list like in parentheses insert love song here like that's where I need to put the love song in context of the album mm-hmm. But then I looked at it and I was like, let's keep it. That's kind of a dope <laughs> idea because, like, the whole point of that song is like, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing when it comes to my love life. Yeah. I fuck up constantly. Mm-hmm. I romanticize people that it's usually just sexual. I sexualize people that I really love. Mm-hmm. I 
never really know how I really feel. Mm. When I get in real relationships, I start doubting it. Mm. When I get into, you know what I mean? I get really into fake relationships yeah. and start thinking it's real. And so, like, that whole song is kind of a, a clusterfuck of, like, if you listen to the lyrics and the, the flow of the lyrics, it's like, I'm actually talking about, like, ten different relationships mm-hmm. in the context of, like, two verses. Right, right. And so it kind of bounces back and forth, and you're like, what's his point here? And then the chorus comes in, and it's like, this was supposed to be a love song, but I can't find the words. I feel like I feel like everything you just explained, how uh, you sexualize people and then you romanticize these people, and I feel like that's so relatable by everybody in their 20s. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're going through all these emotions and we, we think we're in love and then we, we're not in love and then... We, we are in love. And then we, we are in love. Talk about it. And, and then it's lust and then it's like, you hate the person and you... You know, it's yeah. like a whole... Yeah. Like you said, it's a whole clusterfuck of things going on. So when I heard that song, I, I, I think I texted you, I was like, yeah, this is my, this is my life. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going on yeah. with me. Um, and I like... And, and, and also... Even even like the beat and even like even the vibe of the record is like it's it's kind of cheesy in a way. It's super cheesy and it's super simple. We didn't put any delays, echoes, reverb. Really, it was really a simple record. We cut it the whole record pretty much in forty minutes, and we spent like thirty minutes mixing it. Yeah, we really tried to keep it super 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 simple, and kind of cheesy and kind of chaotic for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that reflected what the idea of the song was, which was just like. This isn't a fully developed song. This isn't a fully thought out concept. Mm-hmm. This is like, insert a love song here. Right, like this, right. You know what I mean? Just try to talk about it. And that's why the second part comes in. Mm-hmm. And the second part, Eddie did. And that's, you know, whereas the first half of the song, I'm trying to talk about love, trying to figure it out, trying to put words to it, trying to figure out what it means. That part just feels like... It, yeah, it's more it's more concrete, right? It's as opposed concrete, to the other ones, yeah. like a goddamn tornado of just it just shit, a bunch of yeah. shit, and then this one kind of brings it all back down, and it's like a consistent. And, it's, and all of a sudden, you're, you're like, it kind of feels like uh, the come down, like yeah. when you're high, and yeah. then you start slowly. And coming. it's it's the, it's the come down of the clusterfuck. Yeah, you know what I mean, when you're going through all these things and you you're just doing all this random shit, you have no idea what you're doing, and you. You kind of just rationalize it and go whatever, and then all of a sudden, you're laying in bed. And you're like, "Oh, and, I fucked up this relationship." And and it's it's the perfect length. Like it's like yep. part like personally, I wish it was its own song. Yeah, we almost right? we almost made it its own song. But with the length that it is, it's like a minute and change, I believe. Yeah, I was like, I'm. It's fine. Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not mad. I want more, the, but the I'm good. The craziest part about that is it actually happened almost entirely by accident. Mm-hmm. Because we were here, it was the last day that we were like, putting the final touches on the album, mm-hmm. and Eddie had played me that song. Mm-hmm. He'd recorded it, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's more to it that he had. Um, but I just heard it, and I just was like, it just clicked. I was like, this would be the perfect ending to insert love song here. Yeah. And so we we've been working on the album. We were here for like eight hours. And it was like, we had like 13 minutes left mm-hmm. and Cappy had to dip. And I was like, yo, there's a song on Eddie's folder, like pull it up. Like I had permission from him, like whatever. Like, can we bounce that and put it in, you know what I mean? And make yeah, it one yeah, song. Yeah. And we did it like within the last 13 minutes of the whole project being made. It was so unexpected yeah. and so it, it like fit, random, but it, it like ties the whole project together and slows it down at the perfect time leading into the next song. It, you know, it does, it fits so perfectly, it fits that concept so perfectly, and it was just one of those things of, like, it was just meant to be there, you know what I mean? And he made that for a reason, and that, yeah. you know. Great. One more thing I want to touch on about that song is just to show people, again, how, and maybe maybe you, you didn't mean to do this, but I took it as this, you showed, again, the duality in that record also. Yeah. You have a line where you say, in the beginning, you say, I'm single, but I got a hope. Right, and at first people hear a line, it's like it's nothing to it. It's like oh, it's just whatever. But then you have another line, towards I think it's t- more towards the end, where you say how you can't be alone. So essentially, those lines are the same exact thing, right? right. But the first one is more like again, like the fun, like hey, you know, I got Douchebag. whatever. Yeah. But then the second one is again the same thing, but it's kind of like where you really start to break down what you have going on inside the yeah. issues that you got going on and there's the reason and why and that's how that's how I end my verse my last verse is yeah. like I can't be alone like, yeah and and that 
you know, I I particularly this album I tried to stray away, and I mentioned it on some later songs about like trying to stray away from misogynistic lyrics or like misogynistic yeah, 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 terms. Yeah. Um, and I kind of did that on purpose, mm-hmm. you know, to to kind of highlight the the you know cluelessness and idiocy that comes with being in your twenties and you know while you're trying to figure out who you are and trying to figure out love life and trying to whatever you also have this expectation of like it's all just like partying and sex mm-hmm. and everything's open and whatever so it's just like talking you know what I mean that that word hoe is just like a, a terrible word to describe yeah. a woman but like it just kind of fit that in the, the douchebaggy way like I yeah. tried to kind of do right, right. that and you know I say I'm single but I got a hoe <laughs> I mean it's just like cause we've all been there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we've all been there for better or worse bit, yeah usually uh, for worse for, yeah usually for worse <laughs> uh, so now the next record I know you hate me uh, with Eddie yeah what is what is like the relationship musically with, with you and Eddie like how does Bro, Eddie's my favorite artist to work with Eddie is so uh, he's just he's very smart mm-hmm. he's very calculated he knows exactly what a track needs he knows mm-hmm. exactly where it's supposed to be and that's where his skills and engineer comes into play mm-hmm. because he spends all of his time mixing records and trying to make people's recordings into great records mm-hmm. um, and so that kind of comes out when he writes and when he sings and when he um, when we collaborate in general he's on three songs out of the seven uh, one of them is uncredited but he he just has this like X factor that's just like and it's also just so fun to work with him I feel like right. when I work with him like we just it's simultaneously like we're laughing our asses yeah, off we're having a good can, time you can hear it in the record yeah exactly it's fun we really are having fun with it we're experimenting we're trying new things we're growing together as artists mm-hmm. but at the same time like we're very serious about the craft and yeah. so it's like to me like he's probably the person who's most like me uh-huh. as far as how he approaches records and how he makes records and so it's really fun to work with him because he's so talented and his voice is a fucking amazing yeah. he's an amazing writer um, but he also has that like knowledge of what makes a great record a great right. record now you also have again like like you said how you guys uh, you guys you guys are having fun but there's still like a seriousness to making the record I kind of I heard a few lines you you said uh, <laughs> fuck a list uh, me and Eddie are the only ones <laughs> and you guys said it like in a playful you said it like a playful no, it way playful. Yeah, but it was like a sternness about certain, it like certain people heard that and they didn't like it <laughs> um, yeah no I said I said I mean the whole second verse is pretty much me shit talking and, and that song in general is really inspired by two things because that song has two parts mm-hmm. basically you know what I mean it slows down towards the second half um but the first half is kind of like that why are people sleeping on me like people don't respect like you know what I mean yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna go into any specifics but you know what I mean there's been certain times where I'm just like you know, you get frustrated. yeah you get frustrated and especially for me because people like Dom and Nate you know what I mean get so much respect mm-hmm. it was like a, a frustrating thing of like like damn y'all hate me <laughs> <laughs> like I feel it like I feel you like not I, respecting I me, I know. I it, but it's 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 from a place. It's like from that egotistical place. It was supposed yeah. to be from that like, yeah, as an artist, annoyed, you, whatever. But the second half, when it slows down, mm-hmm. the whole point of that was like, you can only really allow hatred in mm-hmm. and feel when like feel that about the way people think about you mm-hmm. if you think that way about yourself. Mm-hmm. That's that's really what it boils down to. And the point is, is like. I think Dom and Nate are way better than me. Right. So it's like, people would think that and it would piss me off, but it also was like how I thought about myself. And so that's why that second half comes in like, really slow, really more emotional, more, like whatever, and, and my tone in that second half when I come in with that last verse is really like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I really kind of go for it and, and, and that was kind of the point of it. And the first part was really fun to make. Mm-hmm. The, the second verse was really fun to write and some people are not going to like it. Yeah. Um, just because of certain it's shit that truth. I said, but it's, 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 it's the truth. It's like, what did I say? I say, um, uh, I would shut your fucking mouth Ain't no need to talk. I done birthed careers while your CD flop. All your favorite acts ran to me to pop. So talking competition, it's just me and rock. Top two, I hope you got that. Fuck a list. 
oh, don't start that. Mm-hmm. And before you try to talk back, I could kill you motherfuckers with a pop, pop track. track. You know what I mean? So, like, that shit was just fun. That was just fun to write, dude. That was so fun to, like, record. And then I come in with that super fast flow. And, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, when I record that, Eddie was Eddie was tracking me. And he was just like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just did that. Yeah, um, yeah. But nah, it was, it was good, man. Yeah, it was no, it's, it's, a, it's a fun record. It's a fun record, but it, it also has, like, a lot of, you know, especially the second half, there's there's that duality to it, that, right. that undertone of, like, I only feel this way. I only have this grudge and this chip on my shoulder because I feel the way about myself. Right, right, right. I feel the need to prove myself. I feel the need that I'm not good enough, and I feel the need to, like, mm-hmm. let's turn myself. Because, like, all egos like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The second you feel the need to talk shit, and, and assert yourself it's usually from a place of insecurity right, and that was right. what I was trying to highlight with that record now uh, on to my favorite song off the project um, title record Pop Track and Love Pop Songs and uh, this one that I noticed different from the other ones is the chorus right the chorus yeah. it sounds fuller there's more layers to it, right? So many harmonies yeah, yeah it makes me feel like I'm, I'm in a damn like I'm listening to a choir damn near like and it, and it, and it sounds so I don't know it just it stands to me it stood out right away especially that hook man um what what went into making that yeah that so wonder fucking killed that beat first of all mm-hmm. it was amazing being and cappy just fucking again killed the drop cappy and wonder are my favorite production duo working with them is amazing <laughs> um but uh yeah that that song was really like the first four songs in the project are all have a duality to them mm-hmm. there's different things right the first one is like am I lovable because of my music or am I a good person the second track is kind of like I have all of these things inside of me am I really expressing them like because we all have skeletons in our closet Mm -hmm. and that's what makes us real that's what makes us human Mm -hmm. that's what makes us the same but if I don't express that then who am I I'm just gonna go crazy you know what I mean the the third track the duality of the love and not understanding it the fourth track kind of hate me just like again with this like grudge but also personal whatever and so Pop Tracks and Little Songs is kind of like the the epiphany moment on the project where it's like I realize you know that chorus um, that specifically the lines like I'll hold on to all this pain if you can take all my life Mm -hmm. I realized I was it was kind of just like a fuck it you know what? If if my music inspires people, if who I am makes the world a better place, if you know whatever, everything I'm going through, that's my problem. Yeah, I can deal with it. It's definitely uh, you definitely highlight the artist's sacrifice. Right? Yeah, and that's and that's what it's about. That's what the whole project's about. Yeah, is that something about being an artist is like it's kind of not about you. Right, right, right. In a way, the second you release a project, the second you release a song, it's, it's not yours. People. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are gonna interpret it the way they want to. People are gonna feel the way about it. And I realized, like, yo, if options and I told my ex loved her and on time, make people want to dance, make people inspire, make people want to sing along, make people want to. You know, I go to Chicago and people are singing along to every word mm-hmm. and it's just like, who am I to like, like artistic integrity is kind right. of a bullshit thing. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it really is. It, it's kind of because anything you make, like I had so much fun making all those records mm-hmm. and I had so like the experiences I had were so beautiful that like, who am I to be like, I don't have a place to be like, you guys shouldn't like, why do you guys like options? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you guys like that song? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like it because it resonates with them. And like, if that's what I do best, then I got to keep doing it. And that's kind of why I followed it up with 3 a.m. in Chicago, because I came to the epiphany on that project, on that song, and in context of the project, like, you know what? I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm willing to take this artist sacrifice to, to give people something that they can dance to inspire them be happy with you know what I mean and help them um, and help them through whatever because I had so many people hit me up throughout the years like yo whenever I'm in a bad mood I just put on you know this song and you know whatever and so it's like fuck your ego fuck your like your demons mm-hmm. those aren't other pe- those aren't people's problems like right. you have to deal with that in your personal life or you're gonna let it consume you mm-hmm. that's you and so but the music like what you do with the music like that's for, for people. people yeah you know what I mean it's not yours anymore sure. 
and and that's kind of what I came to Epiphany of and, and and so moving on here in Chicago like that's just a song for the people like that's like that, is that why you kept it on the project like I found it yeah. I'm not gonna lie at first I wasn't I was I wasn't too thrilled I was like why does he have this on here yeah. like it's it's already on the last one but maybe like the fifth time I listened to the project as a whole like running through from top to bottom I kind of understood why like it yeah. fit and, and it's not that's the thing about the project it's not very explicit in any of those things I try to keep it very surface level and sell surface level versions of the songs mm -hmm. and so it's kind of obvious the storyline that's happening throughout the project mm -hmm. because I keep it very coded keep it very I'm trying to focus on the song I'm letting the music speak more than the words and and whatnot and so 3am was really kind of just it's supposed to be kind of like the victory lap like when I realized like yo because I made that song in at 3am after my show with Eddie in Chicago and it was sold out I had people sing along to every word and it was just I've never been to Chicago like it was like 200 250 people and they knew every word and it was just like again that was the moment I realized like yo this is so much bigger than me like I had these kids and they're coming up to me after the show you know what I mean it's yeah, just like yeah so beautiful and so that's why I wrote that song it was inspired by that and so it was kind of the perfect place in context of the album because it was like when I realized like yo like get out of your own head you know what I mean stop <laughs> fucking because yeah. you can over as an artist you can overthink overthink everything every, yeah. you know what I mean and like how people perceive you know what I mean there's just all this like because you're putting yourself out into there and you know whatever um, but that song was kind of like you know even from the first word, I love it when you look at me that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? It's just like, it just has this like grip on you that's just like, and it, and the chorus was kind of, I, I, I wrote it in like 15 minutes. Yeah. Drunk as fuck at 3 a.m. in Chicago. So, yeah. um, but the chorus, like it's off of the crew, like kind of came to symbolize something else. Like where I just wrote it because it kind of rhymed and it yeah. sounded good. And, you know what I mean? Like it was kind of, it was a lazy songwriting, but at the same time it came to symbolize like, like for me that's just like it's all for the people around me like I want to I want to support my family I want to support my friends I want to you know what I mean take over the world and inspire people and whatever so like this is all for you guys yeah. you know what I mean this is so now we're here at the last record on the album second, yeah I didn't want this on the album fun fact I don't know how I feel about the record it's my least favorite it's my least favorite I think mine too it's my least favorite mm -hmm. uh but I feel like it showed a glimpse of a different side, cause you're you're rapping, the whole record. You're actually rapping. Yeah, yeah, like you're like you're really going for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. it the beat too. The beat sounds like it kind of gives me a, a, a reminiscent feeling of like old currency. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but why why did you choose to end it with that record? Um, really, cause Three M Chicago to me is the last record mm -hmm. on the project that last song next is kind of like a bonus track almost. it feels like it feels and like it a, feels like a to me it's just like a a forewarning of things to come mm -hmm. and I, I end it with the lyrics like um the most slept on still I am the best one trying to fill the shoes motherfucker you get stepped on mm -hmm. I swear my only competition is my next song so it's on to the next song and that was kind of the idea behind it, it was just like yo I did this project and this project was personal and it was exploratory and it was like for me but at the end of the day like on time through in Chicago like that's the sound I want to pursue that's who I am as an artist mm -hmm. that's like what I'm I'm meant to do and I know that and so next was kind of just like a talk your shit you know what I mean and realize like all it you have to do like, with is yourself like, yeah it feels like 3M Chicago was like the victory lap the last hurrah and then next is like the speech like when you're yeah, accepting just the like award. a little like, yeah just a little yeah let me let me you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> like and, and it's fun because it was a fun record to make like I don't I'm not a, I'm really not an MC like right. that's not what I do best that's not whatever but it was fun to make that record and like especially over that like old school kind of beat and you know those drums are fucking crazy when you're right, playing right. in the car and it was just a fun record to make and it was it was kind of just like again just kind of like a a statement mm -hmm. more than a record on the project or part of that narrative it was really just a statement like yo I know who I am now I'm comfortable in my shoes I know that I can compete with anybody and so it's like bring it on like from here on out it's only up now what do you want people to take away from that I'm like what is the what do you want them to when they're done when they're done listening to it from top to bottom what, what do you want them to walk away with the whole project yeah the project 
That's a great question. I mean, it really, you know, this project was kind of selfish in a way because it, it really was me trying to figure my shit out and mm-hmm. like, uh, but I hope I hope that it inspires people, you know, because I I got a chance to speak my truth, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't ever get a chance to speak their truth, mm-hmm. and especially not in a public way, mm-hmm. especially not in a way that could connect with other people or or resonate with people, and and so, you know, I got a chance to like talk about my life and I, I, I feel like I did it in a pretty good way and I had amazing people helping me with it I had amazing producers I had amazing uh, writers and, and features and so you know I got to speak my truth and I want people to speak theirs and that was kind of you know especially with skeletons and I can make you happy and you know some of the earlier checks where I was really like confused and it gets more self-assured as the project goes on right right um, but I just want people to like not be afraid to like be who they are and not be afraid to like what they like because I feel like right now like everyone's so caught up in image and yeah. what's I don't want to say cool because that's such a dumb word but like what's like normal and what's not mm-hmm. what's what's acceptable and what's not what's what do people like about you and what they don't mm-hmm. and I kind of just want people to be like fuck that you know what I mean like do what makes you happy and and do it in a way that that changes the world around you and changes the people around you. Be the best person you can be. Because being who you truly are is being the best person you can be. Right. Being honest with yourself, being, you know, uh, a real human being, being a good person to people around you, being like that's that's who you are, and that's what that's what contributes the best legacy to this world. Um, and so the project was again, like I said, it was really just a selfish kind of exploration of, of who I am and what I want to do mm-hmm. and it helped me figure it out and, it, and now I know what I want to do this next the next project I work on is going to be like I said more on time more 3 a.m. more bangers but you know kind of keeping that that honesty of who I am and, yeah. and keeping it really inspired right. um, but I hope throughout the process of the project people you know kind of take away some of these struggles that I've had mm-hmm. and relate to them and, and you know feel less alone all right, man. Congratulations on the album. Thank you, man. Very dope. Uh, available on all streaming platforms. August 24th. August 24th. Yes, wow. sir. All the blame.